from 1991. R.L. Stein's The Snowman, a cold-blooded killer. So this was in the midst of Fear Street books. It predates Goosebumps. He used to do a lot of independent thrillers, and this is one of them. And it's it's his classic murder mystery thriller suspense here, and I thought it was pretty solid overall. First off, what I'm going to do to you guys, I'm going to read you the back of the cover, get you a feel for the plot. Let's get into this. Heather feels cold all the time, alone. Her guardian hates her. He'd like to see her dead. He'd like all her money. But for now, he settles for controlling it and making Heather's life miserable. Poor little rich girl, just like Cinderella. Then the gorgeous ice blonde guy shows up at the crummy restaurant where Heather works after school. He understands about Heather. He's her Prince Charming. No one can get to Heather now. Heather feels so safe, so loved, so warm. So, that's our lead character, Heather. She's flawed, and they kind of make you even dislike her for some circumstances, but overall it's a really good book. So, Heather, this girl, she's 16, and Arlstein goes the cliche route, like her parents were killed in a car accident, so she was raised by her aunt and uncle, and her uncle's a total sullen a-hole. He rages on her all the time. He humiliates her in front of her friends um, and all the guys she's dating. She's dating this guy. Actually, she's in a relationship with this guy named Ben. They'd be Facebook official if there was Facebook back then. But they were going out. She liked him a lot. But she's totally captivated and entranced by this guy that walks in named Bill Jeffers. And what is this? There is no supernatural element to this. His name is this. His name is his nickname is Snowman because he's albino and he's got this white blonde hair. So that's where the snowman comes in. And it's set during the winter, so there's a lot of good narration of icicles and snow and whatnot. So she's totally captivated by him, and she ends up going on dates with him, even though she's still dating Ben. So Uncle James catches on to this, and she really hates her Uncle James, and she, everyone has a bane in their life where they just wish them dead, you know, or wish that they would just rid themselves in any way. It doesn't matter if they met their doom as long as they'd be reprieved from their freaking scourge. Anyway... So they start dating. People follow them on their dates. You don't know what that's about. There's headlights always chasing them. That's like every freaking chapter in this. So Bill Jeffers shows up. The snowman. He shows up at the house for dinner one time. And Uncle James is actually kind of hilarious sometimes. He'd be like, is that albino coming over for dinner again? And she was like, all right, well, make sure we're, we're serving white meat then. And he's like laughing at his own jokes. It was pretty funny. Anyway, Jeffers is your total atypical badass bad boy. He was he showed no emotion through most of it and was like, you know what? I, I, I'm good with parents. I can handle parents and whatnot. And he feeds her a bunch of lies. And what ends up happening is three-fourths of the way through it, he ends up killing Uncle James. And she's like, what the hell? So there's no mystery after that, you know, you know, he's the killer and he's like, and before that he black, he, he, he convinced Heather to give him a $2,000 check so that he could have an operation, pay for an operation for his ailing terminally ill brother, which obviously he doesn't exist. So there's just deception and lies from this guy left and right. She doesn't know it yet. But then he kills her, and he ends up showing up and comforting the grieving aunt of Uncle James. And it becomes that. He lies, he shows up at the funeral, he still shows up at dinner. He's a cold-blooded psychopath, he has no emotions for it, and she's just totally perplexed by this. And he's like, you know, and she's like, you know what, I'm going to turn you in. 
because you killed him and I cannot stand this and I'm not going out with you anymore. And he's like, you can't turn me in. You want to know why? Because I still got that check that you wrote for me for my ailing brother. There is no brother. He used the check as blackmail so he could be like, you paid me to do this and this is proof. This is my proof. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to need another check too so I can keep this one as proof so that you never rat on me. And those headlights, where they're getting all chased and everything, those are, that's a cop car. FBI agents are after him. You want to know why? He doesn't even go to Heather's high school. He's not a new boy. He killed his dad and he hopped down and he hopped into town. So the FBI's at him. He isn't even a high schooler. He's like 19 or 20, presumably. And then what ends up happening? Aunt Belle ends up inviting him for dinner. And then he's like, you know what? I need $5,000 to really shut up. Then I'll leave you alone. And she's like, fine, whatever. She's got total control of her trust fund now since her Uncle James died. And she quit her restaurant job. And he's like, give me five grand. So he ends up writing her a... F he ends, she ends up going to the bank and withdrawing five grand. And before you know it, a chapter later, guess who the new tenant is at the house? Yep, Bill Jeffers, the snowman. He paid Aunt Belle for two months' rent to stay in... The so he just sticks around as this nuisance. And it's really captivating the last like third of the book I just rushed through it really easy read 180 pages and what we find out is she hooks back up with Ben and Ben comes up with a bright idea like hey let's go into the room in his garage and steal the check from him and then he can't blackmail you then we could tell the cops she's like good idea so they go in there he gets clubbed in the head and a snowman ends up taking Heather to their secluded spot. They built this snowman in the woods, deep within this park. And he ends up encasing her inside a snowman. And one of her only heirlooms that she collected from her father was a lighter. And this is where this comes into play. She uses that lighter to escape from this snowman and ends up lighting snowman's scarf on fire. As in Bill Jeffers, the villain. He burns. He doesn't die. Miraculously, he... Arl Stein doesn't kill any pets in this. No dogs or cats perish. Only the mean Uncle James. And the villain goes to get help. Because he's a total cold-blooded psychopath. So other than that, there was no mystery and everything. It's still a good book. It's still riveting in my opinion, and I recommend it as a pretty decent read here. And how did they, how did the, and the cops end up showing up at the end there, how did they end up knowing where? Because Ben spied on them one of those times that when she was uh, on a date with them in that spot. So he knew where to go, he knew that would be secluded, and that's pretty much the ending of this. I read this before Christmas, you know I like to delve into entertainment that involves snow around the holidays and yeah tune in for more rl stein thrillers this was jbm from mr creep show 09 checking in i'm out thanks for watching